Hi guys, it's Ollie from Flight Comp, and we're gonna take a look at the Samba Pike Perfection F3J SL or Super Light V-Tail model. Um, this is actually gonna be my personal model, and I'm really excited about it. And I'll give you guys just a look at uh, the color scheme I got. Here's one wing panel, and here's the other one. And th this is just an awesome. Uh, paint scheme and I love the colors on it. I don't know how visible this airplane is going to be but I don't care I'll give it a shot because I just think it's gorgeous. Here's the fuselage. You can see it's the V-tail and the stabs. There's the top, bottom and the, the other side. Top, bottom. Actually, my buddy Bert over at uh, Concept5 Racing and uh, Racing Graphics in San Diego came up with this uh, design for me. And it's kind of actually a, a Yamaha MotoGP tribute sort of theme. And I think it looks awesome. I love how it's uh, not the same on the wings, how basically this wing has all the stripes and the other one just says perfection on it. So a big shout out to you, Bert. Thanks for coming up with these cool graphics. Now, I'm not really a fan of V-tails, and I think I tried a V-tail once on an old Explorer that I had, and I didn't really like it. But I'm going to give this one a shot. I've heard from a few of my customers and some people online that the Pike Perfection V-tail doesn't have a lot of rudder authority or yaw authority. And I want to find out if that's the case. Or I want to find out if maybe there's something I can do about that or maybe if it's uh, something we can tune out of the airplane or I should say tune into the airplane um, through throws and settings and, and CG. It looks to me like these V-tails are, are plenty big really and they have, um, they have a good angle on them and the control surfaces, the moving surfaces are, are decently sized so it looks like it should be okay, but, but we'll, we'll find out. When I first started uh, flying Pike Perfections, um, I've only flown the x Perfections. Um, my first one, when I put it together and put the recommended throws and CG on it that, that Samba recommends, I didn't like it at all. It, 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 it was sluggish, it turned slow. Um, it was a little tip stally, I guess. And I flew it like that for maybe a month or two and really kind of didn't think much of it and didn't put too much time into the model. And then um, and then I started playing with the setup and, and, and adjusting the throws and I started moving the CG back from, from 112 from the leading edge where Samba recommends to I think I'm back to 118 or 119 now and, and it's just a transformed airplane. It, it turns so well. That plane, my C68, which weighs 69 ounces, outturns an old Explorer X2 I had, that a 3.5 X2 that, that weighed 58 ounces. I'm just so much more confident with that plane, especially uh, in low level situations where I'm, you know, I'm doing a low level save and I'm, and I'm you know, maybe five, 10 feet off the ground. I'm, I'm fully confident in, in, in the perfection that it, it'll, uh, It'll make the turns and I can pull hard on it and I don't, I'm not really too worried about, about tip stalling if, if I'm in lift. So I'm really hoping that this V-tail, I'm, I'm hoping that I, I can get this to, to fly similar. Now this is an SL or a super light and I chose this because I only have right now C68s that I fly personally and I wanted something for early morning, uh, really calm, dead air conditions. And I think even if the V-tails maybe Maybe if I can't even, if I can't get the V tails to have enough yaw authority, um, I don't think it'll be too bad for this model because if I do fly this in calm conditions in the first rounds um, of a contest, I don't see myself being in a situation where I'm going to need to put drastic movements uh, into the tail of the airplane uh, because the conditions will be good. You know, if I'm flying it early in the morning and I'm I'm on a landing approach or something, I think I would have to seriously messed up to need a whole lot of um, yeah, authority. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'll give you guys the weights on this airplane. The fuselage is 311 grams or about 11 ounces 
And the thing that I love about Pike Perfections is this fuselage is like a baseball bat. It is so strong. The booms, uh, you can you can squeeze them, in and you, you know they're just they're just solid. There's a lot of F3J models out there right now, and, and you know if you grab them or squeeze them, they flex, and you can even get them. You can hear them crack and stuff. And 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 this thing, it's just like a baseball bat. I am in no way worried about breaking this fuselage on the hardest of landings. And this is an SL fuselage, and it still feels extremely strong. Even back here where it's really narrow where the V-tail goes, this is really strong too. And I just think it's built really well. And I like having that confidence of knowing I can slam this thing into the ground if I have, if I have to, hopefully I don't, but if I have to, and it'll take, it'll take the abuse. Okay, the wings are uh, 450 grams and the, the right one's 450 and the left one's 457. So that's about 16 uh, ounces each and seven gram difference between the two. That's probably not that bad. The V-tails are 33 grams exactly each. And I'm, I'm using a um, standard joiner. This is not an SL joiner. I requested from Samba that they send me standard joiners with every SL model that I ordered. And then I ordered some extra SL joiners too. Um, I don't know, I heard some things of some SLs breaking joiners, cracking joiners aren't hard landings, or even shearing off the wing at the joiner on a hard toe. And to me, I want the confidence of the full strength joiner. The weight difference isn't isn't that huge. That to me doesn't justify the difference. And the, and this is center of mass on the airplane, so I don't think it's going to make a huge difference as far as uh, as uh, the weight goes. So the total weight of all these parts combined is 1385 grams or about 48.75 ounces. That's considerably less than uh, a C68 or even an LS. My target weight for this airplane ready to fly is gonna be about 58 ounces or 1650 grams. And I'll, I'll show you guys uh, some of the equipment that I'm gonna put Okay, so it. here are the servos that I'm gonna put into this SL V-tail. Starting with the fuse, I'm using uh, good old trusty Airtronics 809 servos. I think these servos will be uh, plenty powerful for the small V-tails. And then for the ailerons, I'm going to be using these new KST X08 servos. And these things are, are just tiny. They're super light. They're super small. I'll give you guys some specs real quick. At 8.4 volts, it's 2.8 kilograms per centimeter. And all the way down to uh, 3.8 volts, it's 1.4 kilograms per centimeters. And the speed at 8.4 volts is 0 0.09 uh, seconds. And they weigh eight grams. Me and a buddy of mine have been putting these in the tips of planes like uh, Explore 2s and um, Electra F5J airplanes. And, and they've proven to be really good. So you guys might wanna look into these. And, and they're affordable too, they're about 34 bucks. And then for the flaps, I'm using these trusty JR398 HVs. And actually, I just started using these. Um, even up to about a year ago, I'd put Airtronic servos in everything I built, 761s and 809s strictly. And lately, I've really been branching out and, and using uh, mixing and matching servos. And, and this setup here, like these KSDs go up to 8.4 volts. The JRs are rated for 7.4. I know the Airtronics are good past 7.4 volts. So I'm gonna be running everything off an unregulated life pack. And it's, sort, it's gonna be basically a, a high voltage setup and, and it's, gonna, it's gonna work well. I'm gonna use a Hyperion 1450 life pack. For the wings, I'm gonna be mounting the JRs and the, the KST X08s in these RC Solutions um, CNC servo frames. These are wood frames and these are awesome. They're super light and the the precision of machining on these wood frames is, is amazing. I've actually compared these to other wood frames and it's just the fit. These are, I think, really honestly, these are the best frames you can get. Let's take a closer look at the detail on the back of the fuselage where the V-tail is made up. Samba uses square V-tail joiners. 
so you know they have some confidence in the precision of their molds and like I said before this this little flap back here is really strong so I don't think you have to worry about this thing snapping off and then they give you a nice little tail cone that fits very nicely right over the back and we'll just use some some tape to to hold that guy on and it seems to me that the servo tray layout is is the same as as they use on the the X tail I don't think there's any difference in the size of the holes or the offsets they use for the servos here's just a quick look at the the V tails it's got carbon pins, carbon alignment pins, and uh, looks like brass tube with brass uh, uh, ball joints. So there's a short look at the Samba Pike Perfection SL V-Tail. And I'm going to build this guy and, and report back to you. And we'll try to answer the age-old question. To V or not to V? I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Can you actually believe I said V-tail detail on camera? Let's take a closer look at the V-tail detail. <laughs> the V-tail detail. The V-tail detail. <laughs> the V-tail detail. <laughs>